YouTube uh, this past week and the YouTube universe. Um, the YouTube universe um, voted for a modified slimline pen. So that's what we're going to, uh, that's what we're going to, that's what we're going to turn tonight. So I have my lathe set up ready to go. Um, before we do that, I'm going to grab the, um, I'm going to go ahead and grab my pen blank. I also want to thank anyone who um, went ahead and joined us for the virtual pen turners gathering uh, this past Sunday. It was a ton of fun being a first time demoer, um, if that's even a word at this point. Um, but it was a good time. I had a lot of fun. Uh, there were a lot of good presenters there and we had a, uh, we just had a good time. Hey Anna. Um, so here's our blank. Uh, it's a blue and orange, uh, caster's choice, brilliant blue and blaze orange blank. Uh, it'll probably be a little more apparent, the color separation. Um, when uh when i actually get this turned so a traditional two-piece uh slim line uh, if you're familiar with turning pens you have the two pieces you have a top section and a bottom section uh instead this is one piece well so far all i've done is i've actually only epoxied one of the tubes into the end this other tube i haven't roughed up i haven't done anything to but what I did was I set it in the other end so it doesn't fall through because we epoxied the other tube in here um, and then we flushed it up. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this on the lathe and remembering this, um, this loose tube, uh, remembering what end that, that goes on, that, that is important. Uh, so we're going to adjust this mandrel. been a minute. Come on. All right. There we go. All right. So again, our loose tube is on this end, so that's fine. I've barrel trimmed both ends just like we should. There we go. Tighten this down. I will be using the negative rake scraper from T Shadow tonight uh, when I turn. One of the things that I learned during the demo, uh, during the virtual pen turners gathering, is that with the negative rake scraper from uh, from T Shadow. Um, you actually want to turn with this just slightly below center. Um, I was always under the impression that it was that you're supposed to use it um, either at center or slightly above. So that was a misconception um, on my end. So even as a demonstrator, um, I, lo I love taking part in these in these uh, pen turning events because you know, I, I don't know everything. There's, there's a lot that I need to learn. So, um, so I, I enjoy the, I enjoy the demos, uh, just as much as the next person. Now I did cast this blank, um, with Alumalite clear slow. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, I'm just getting set up here. I think that's pretty close. If not, we'll, we'll adjust from there. Um, and it was one of my bespoke, um, pen kits or not pen kits, pen blanks. Uh, what I did was I, I, I laid out my two tubes, one tube, two tube, cut it down to size. And then, um, and then was able to, uh, cut it down to the right size from there. All right. So let's go ahead and make sure we're set up here and we should be able to get, uh, we should be able to get turning. I check the chat real quick. 
Uh, Angie. Oh, Andrew. Anderson Smoke Show. Go check that guy out. He's one of my high school buddies. I just watched one of his... Uh, one of his um, videos he just released. And now I need ribs. So... Yeah, if you want to deliver ribs, I'm not going to be upset. I'm just saying. All right. I'm going to make sure, sure enough, when I turn my pens, I turn almost as basically as fast as I can. I'm using the Rikon uh, 70. Dash 220 VSR, so that's variable speed rever uh, reverse. Um, my lathe will go almost 4,000 RPMs. I usually turn between 3,000 and 3,500 RPMs. So uh, let's let's get this face shield on and uh, let's make some shavings. going well but i think i might be just a touch low even even for this so i'm just going to readjust real quick this is one of my favorite tools on the lathe not only does it allow me to uh safely um take the take the uh shavings away but um makes for a good taste when you go to brush your teeth that was a joke it was a terrible joke. I don't actually use this toothbrush for, uh, yeah, for brushing my teeth. That'd be gross.
this point it's just fine adjustment just trying to figure out exactly what works uh, playing with the height here as you guys know on last week I believe it was last week's live stream or the week before I introduced this tool um, so I'm, I'm still getting used to it I really enjoy it it's it's a it's a it's a fun tool that that does really well for me let's keep turning Right now, my leg says I'm turning at about 4,050 RPMs. That's how you know you're doing it right. You get the nice streams of resin coming off there. I have some really cool color patterns in here. Um, I'm hoping to bring you guys in uh, a little closer once I get uh, a little further down the line. Um, Okay. Um, so a dust collector would help with those strings. I completely agree. Um, and I do have a Harbor Freight dust collector. Um, but for the sake of the live stream, um, knowing how loud the dust collector is, I leave it off because if, and I don't have a, remote that I can just turn it on and off. So for the sake of being able to talk with you guys, um, that's why I'm not using it right now. But if I'm just doing a regular video that I'm going to edit, a lot of times I edit out the tool noises um, and I put in music or voiceover. Um, I'll run the dust collector then. Or um, if I'm just turning without the camera on, um, I'll put the dust collector on there and it does it does help immensely. Um, I converted my Harbor Freight dust collector from a one stage to a two stage uh, dust collector and that has that has saved a lot of that, that, that has helped immensely. So uh, so that's the reason I don't have the dust collector on right now. So um, we're still turning. We're getting there slowly, slowly but surely so, um, let's, let's continue on.
that worked well. Um, so during Sunday's demo um, of the negative rake um, scraper of this, uh, where you can get a T shadow, um, it was explained to me that you hold it 90 degrees to your piece and you hold it just below and you place your tool just below center and you get a great cut. I'll be honest, this is this right here, just just feeling this blank right now. That is an insane. That just feels insane. Um, you know, that little bit of instruction, that little bit of demo took this tool for me and took it from and I don't know how to use this tool to a this is giving me a really nice finish tool. So this is, this is one that's going to stay around for a while, for a long time. Um, okay. All right. So let's, uh, let's keep turning. Still turning it just over. 4,000 RPMs. I know I'm stopping quite a bit, but I just, I like to have a conversation with you guys. Um, you know, the, the blessing and the curse of the slimline, whether it's a one piece or a two piece is I, you know, you, you, there are things you can do to reduce the diameter to start. Um, but you just, it's just a really thin uh, kit. So it just takes a while to get turned down to the bushings. Now we're, we're getting close. Um, but so we have a little bit more turning to do and then we'll get on to, uh, finishing and I'll take you through my process on that. Um, so <sighs> let's keep going.
I'm getting close enough now that I really have to be conscious about taking light cuts. I'm generally a very heavy-handed turner, so when I get close to the bushings, I have to really pay attention to not be uh, too heavy because I know if I start turning heavy, getting this close to the bushings, I've had a few pens blow up on me that I really wish would have not. Fast speeds, light cuts, and sharp tools. Those are the, those are the uh, golden rules of pen turning, if you will. Fast speeds, light cuts, sharp tools. If you have those three things, then you're in pretty good shape for the most part. Slow and steady wins the race. All right, we are still a little bit proud of the bushings. Um, and I'm going to still keep turning a little bit, but I'll tell you what. The more I use this, this uh, negative rake, um, it's called the TS 
NRS tshadow.com you can see that there um the finish on this you know bob over at t shadow said you can basically go to micro mesh straight off the tool um yeah the 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 smoothness i know i'm making up words now but the 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 finish you get off the tool is just insane um Okay. Um, Anna, I, I, did, I have been following along. Uh, I hope you are able to get back out in the shop soon. Um, it's good to hear that you're doing well. Um, so hope, hopefully sooner than later. All right. Um, I guess at this point, let's keep turning. We are getting close, I promise. Light cuts, fast speeds, sharp tools. Dang, that's smooth.
as much as I don't want to because I love the finish on this, I think it might be time to um, it might be time to bust out the 120 grit gouge just to get down to the bushings because uh, I I might take one or two more passes with the with uh, with the uh, NRS, but we'll see. Um, we'll see how it goes. <sighs> One or two more passes, and then uh, it might be time to go through the array of sanding anyway. So we're getting there. I think it's time to go to the 120 grit gouge. As smooth as this is, and as much as I'd like to get down to the bushings without having to get use sandpaper, um, you know, I'm just not a good enough uh, turner to be confident with that. So, um, so we'll go ahead and get that started. I generally sand in reverse. Um, and I don't go typically below 120 grit uh, when sanding pens. Because I find that if I go below 120 grit, I have an extra hard time getting the, uh, the super deep scratches out. So I also sand in reverse. I don't know if I mentioned that. But here we go. It's hard to see on the uh, on the camera, but right in this area here, my uh, my pen has a little bit of pregnant pen syndrome. Kind of gets a little. It's a little. Um, it's not quite where I want it yet. But we're getting there. Slowly but surely. Does anyone have any good plans for this Tuesday night? It's a Tuesday night in May and everyone is 
more or less sitting at home because of the current situation in the world, but I hope we're towards the end of it because I'm ready to see people again as much of as much of an introvert as I am. Um, I'm ready to, I'm ready to start, uh, I'm ready to start seeing people face to face again, not just on uh, Zoom calls or or uh, things like that. They're definitely good technologies, but hopefully we don't have to use them for too much longer. But I'm also not holding my breath. Like I said earlier, I really like these one-piece slim lines. It's just a pain to get them down to the bushings because you have to remove so much material. Now, I'm sure if I was a more skilled turner, I wouldn't have to spend this much time sanding, but it's something I can work to. It's something I can improve and get better at. Once we get down to the bushings, I'll be able to go through the sanding regiment. Uh, the, the grit's 120 to 400. It's a dry sandpaper. Um, and then... We'll run through micro mesh and polish. We're getting really close here. Oh yeah, we're just we're almost down to the bushing there. When you are sanding, if you're a pen turner, when sanding, we always want to make sure that we are constantly moving because if we stay in one spot for too long, we'll sand away. We have the, uh, we, we run the risk of sanding away too much material on one end so it might not be um, a uniform thickness all the way across where you might end up with low spots in your, even, even turnings in general, if you, um, you know, if you turn spindles or anything like that, I think we are just about there. Let's turn this off and check. Now we did put quite a few scratches in the blank, but again, when we go through our sanding regiment and our polishing regiment, we will be able to get those out. Got just a little bit more work here to do. On the ends. Now you can focus in one area, but you don't wanna, you don't wanna stay in a single area for too long. Now I'm just try, trying to level this all out if i check here it feels pretty good on both ends now if we remember at the beginning of the live stream we glued in the tube on this end but the tube on this end is still loose it's not actually glued in so we know this is going to be our uh our cap end so this is where the cap and the clip will be this end will be where the uh ink uh retracts now since i was spinning the lathe that the lathe was on and it's got these uh it's got a scratch pattern in it, it it's spherical i'm going to change the scratch pattern by 
rotating this manually with the lathe off and instead of having uh, circular scratches I'm going to now have horizontal scratches which makes it easier to um, it just it just makes the blank look better and the scratches um, go away more more uh, easily not very eloquent with my words all right now that we are done there I have Abernet sandpaper and that goes from 120 all the way up to 400 so I'm not going to spend a whole lot of time on this 120 because we already did 120 but we have 120 180 240 320 and 400 so I will run through those grits um, I will also turn the lathe speed down I'm going to switch belt positions here this Rikon is a variable speed which makes it very nice um, again, I'm still in reverse and I'm going to turn this down on the second, uh, belt setting, um, pretty low. So it'll probably be somewhere between five and 600, give or take. Um, okay. Uh, hate sanding, no matter what project I'm doing. That is the truth. Randy and Amanda, oddball. <laughs> Yeah, uh, I can't say that it's my, um, I can't say that that's my term. I didn't coin that term. I heard it from other turners. Um, yeah, um, more basement cleaning. Are you guys getting close? Are you guys, um, how, you know, how are you guys doing? You hanging in there? All right, so like I said earlier, I didn't, uh, I wasn't going to spend too much time on, on this 120 grit because we already used 120 previously. So I'm just going to rotate this by hand. Try to get some of the scratch patterns out or maybe not out, but change the scratch pattern and then they will become less visible as I work up the, up the uh, grit system. So now we're gonna move to 180. I'm sanding in reverse at about 540 RPMs. Um, when you guys are turning pens, do what works for you, but, you know, do what feels safe and do what works for you. If you ask 100 pen turners what their process is, you're going to find a hundred different processes. Um, so, you know, over the, over, you know, I have some, some pen turners that, that I learned from quite a bit. So I'm heavily influenced by a handful of pen turners. So I might see something that one pen turner does and see something that another pen turner does. Um, I might use those different, uh, techniques and strategies to finish a pen um, to kind of make it my own. Um, but, you know, to say that there is one set way to turn a pen start to finish, that there's one set, um, so there, there's one set of procedures. Um, yeah, there are general processes, but it's hard to say. All right. All right. All right. So now again, we're going to rotate the blank by hand, change our scratch pattern from a circular scratch pattern to a more horizontal scratch pattern. And again, this doesn't have to take forever 
you want to do a good job with this, but it also doesn't have to take you all night to finish this. And we're coming up on almost an hour here, but once we finish the sanding, I'll go to micro mesh and polish, and then we'll press this together. So um, we're not too far away from being able to say that we have a completed pen. Uh, if you have joined us in the past, um, you'll know that I've done a CA finish on some of my pens, which is a super glue finish. I'm not going to do that on this pen uh, because, or I'm not going to do that on this blank um, because it's a resin only blank. If it was anything other than resin, I do a CA finish. So hybrids um, or straight wood, those all get CA finishes. So now this is 400 grit sandpaper. It's Abernet. This will be our last dry sandpaper grit that we use. Man, this thing is looking fun. All right, there's the sandpaper. What questions do you guys have so far? Um, okay, so now that we have now that we have our sand, uh, our sanding done, normally I would swap out the regular bushings for non-stick bushings and I would do my CA finish. But again, like I said, because this is a resin blank, I'm not going to, I'm not going to CA finish so I don't have to swap out my bushings. What I'm going to do though, is I'm going to get the, uh, micro mesh out and I am going to turn the lathe up in speed. Now I like to micro mesh in, uh, in the forward direction. Um, so I make sure I, to turn, I make sure to turn the, uh, turn the lathe on there. It's in forward. Turn the lathe speed up. I usually like to turn, or not turn, but uh, micro mesh somewhere in the 1200 ish range. So 12, 13, 1400 RPMs, give or take. Again, that's just what I find works for me. You know, you, if you're turning pens, you might find that, you know, a different speed works better for you. So before I start micro mesh, because micro mesh is a wet sanding system, I'm going to put a, a towel down so my uh, the lathe bed doesn't get uh, doesn't get wet. Clean my micro mesh pads earlier today, so they are ready to go. All right. So now this is where. We're going to spend some time when you micro mesh and wet sand this first pad. There's a set of nine pads. It starts at 12, uh, no, 1500 grit and it goes to 12,000. Um, in the earlier grits, um, I like to spend more time. And as you see, um, as I'm working this, uh, micro mesh pad, you can kind of see that there's a grit coming off on the micro mesh pad. That's the, you know, that, that's the sanding, that's the wet sanding that's happening. Um, so the reason I use this water bottle trick, um, 
instead of dunking them into water. Again, I didn't get this, you know, I didn't invent this myself. I saw another turner do it. When you dip that first micro mesh pad back into the, your original water, you're taking that grit and you're spreading it into, you know, you're putting it on the other micro mesh pads, which is just basically undoing what you've just done. So now I can go to the next pad and work with the next pad uh, without having any of the old grit to get on um, get on get on the future sanding pads now I'm really bad at multitasking so to talk and to count at the same time um, is really really hard for me but usually if I'm not doing a live stream um, I'm counting to 20 or 30 on each of these micro mesh pads just to uh, give it some time on there. It doesn't mean it's 20 or 30 seconds, uh, although it's probably close to that. It's just, you know, I, I take my time and count to 20 or 30. So, you know, one, two, three, four, five, six, you know, and I go all the way up to 20 or 30. But because I'm... Uh, Kind of having a, a dialogue with you guys and, and hopefully having a conversation um the fact that i'm i'm talking and doing this at the same time i'm just going based on feel and i'm sure it'll be fine As you go through the micro mesh pads, um, the, the finer the grit becomes, so the smoother the pad becomes, you're going to notice less and less of the grit um, show on the pad, which is, no and, and that is normal. Um, it's, just, it's just part of it because you're taking less off because it's less abrasive. I know a lot of people um, who have switched from micro mesh and gone to zona paper um i think i want to try it eventually but i just haven't got there yet because i have this set of micro mesh pads that i'm that are still good and i also have uh, a whole nother brand new set that i haven't even opened yet so so it'll be a while before i uh decide to try to uh get into zona but i've heard a lot of people really like it so I'm sure it's a good product. Four more grits of micro mesh. And like you, like I said earlier, you can see there's not nearly as much grit coming off the uh, in the in the later pads. If the blank or the micro mesh pad seems to get a little dry, you can just dab a few more drops of water on there and you're good to go. And even though this is wet sanding, it's still sanding. So just like before, as long as you keep moving, um, you'll be fine. If you stay in one spot for too long, you know, you could have some uneven wear and, you know, have some low spots. But Just like anything else, just keep moving. Advice for life, really. Just keep moving. Might be forward, might be back. Hopefully it's not back. We all like to move forward, but 
sometimes we need to move back before we move forward. It's when we learn the most. Or at least that's been my experience. One more. If we just show people videos of people sanding pens, that would not be a very good PSA to or a very good, uh, not PSA, but it wouldn't be a very good commercial to get people into pen turning. Here, this is a lot of fun. Buy these tools and then sand until forever. All right. I'm actually going to leave that. I'm actually going to turn that back on because now that the blank is has been wet sanded it is wet so i'm going to let that spin and dry a little bit until i can get a paper towel actually not paper towel um, i use blue shop towels i've learned that blue shop towels work way better for me and they don't leave um they don't leave the little particles in your in your finish so i just take a little bit of a paper towel and dry off this blank now when you're doing this you want to try not to touch your metal bushings because there is metal dust that you could put back into your pen blank but you can see that I took off some, some moisture from the blank. And I'm just going to go to a dry section and dry it off one more time. You can see there's a lot less there. And then I'll go make sure I'm in a dry spot and then just do this by hand. Now that we are micro meshed and we are dry, I'm going to take some more strips of blue shop towel and we're going to polish. So if you guys have been with me for any length of time, you know that I polish with the Novus system, Novus three, two, and one. So three, three is white and it's a heavy scratch remover. Two is the fine scratch remover. It's more of a brown color. And then one is the actual polish. So we'll go through that tonight. Um, let me check the chat. Jim, what's up? Uh, you're just in time to watch us uh, polish this and... Uh, Go ahead and press this into a kit so you're uh you're not late at all you just missed some turning but no big deal <laughs> just count to 10 twice that's funny um yeah all right let's go ahead and get this party started so I like to use Novus 3 on the same speed that I use micro mesh, so approximately 12 to 13, 1400, something like that. And I'll just put a dot of plastic polish on there. It's clogged up. Um, so what I need to do is I need to get my trusty toothpick. Go ahead. And sometimes this, sometimes this gums up. So I just take a toothpick and pop out the, the clog and it's good to go again. It's a little annoying, but it takes half a second and we're back in business. So I like to make sure that I cover the blank. And again, I'm trying to avoid the bushings. 
I know I'm going to get a little bit on there, but I don't want my towel to actually bring any of that dust, that metal dust onto, onto, onto my finished blank. So now that I have the, um, Novus on the blank, I'm just going to work this in for a little bit. And again, this is, this is a heavy scratch remover. So if there's any, uh, scratches that are in there that the, uh, sand the dry sandpaper or the micro mesh didn't pick up this is to aid in in, in in that can't talk tonight and i usually stop working this in once i don't see as much or if it appears that it's been thoroughly worked in i go ahead and find a clean spot of towel and I just with a fair amount of pressure but not heavy pressure run run this across the blank just to clean up anything that's left over I don't know if you can see it there but you can actually see the line now I went ahead and I hit the bushing with this on the way um, on the way out, but I didn't bring it back in, so I'm still okay. Um, so now we're good with Novus 3. So now we're gonna go and move on to Novus 2. And Novus 2, we're gonna apply the same way we did as Novus uh, 3. Uh, Paul says, I use turtle wax paste. Yeah, there are a lot of different products out there there are guys who use automotive wax. There are guys who use um, Novus. There are guys that use um, Hot Ultra Gloss. There's, I think, uh, uh, Triple E is another one. Um, there's a whole lot of different products out there. So, um, like I said earlier, whatever you find works for you. You might find that what worked when you st uh, began your turning journey might not work now or you find something better um, you know it's all a process I know my processes now that I uh, use are not uh, how I started when I started I thought I knew what I was doing because I watched a couple videos and then I tried it myself and then realized I had no idea what I was doing, apparently. So through time and practice, you find what works for you. And, you know, who am I to say that my way is the right way? You know, it works for me, so that's what I do. So just because I use my way doesn't mean you can't use uh, your way. That's the nice thing about pen turning. It's kind of like, uh, like math, just because... You know, we can, we can both get the same correct answer. It's just, you know, we might do it, a slight, we might do our slightly different ways, but it still works out. All right, so we've worked our Novus 2 in. So just like, again, dry, a dry section of cloth. And I'm going to wipe this off. All right, and now we have the polish. All right, we are getting close. So I just squirt some polish on the actual uh, cloth. It's good to go, and then I just kind of rub this in. I don't necessarily do this one by feel. Um, I just think once it's thoroughly applied, I go ahead and call that um, call that good. So now that that's, that polish is on, I'm going to get a clean paper towel 
or not paper towel. I keep saying paper towel. I really mean blue shop cloth. And I'm just going to take, I'm just going to dry any excess moisture off of the blank if there is any. And now I've turned my, and you can see, didn't look like there was much of anything there. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to, again, I'm not touching my metal bushings, but I'm just going to go over this and I'm just by hand, I'm going to turn the lathe and I'm going to just make sure that we are dry of any, any moisture or scratch remover polish or anything like that. And I think we're pretty good right there. Um, Angie, I'm trying to start making my own blanks. Um, so making your own blanks is a lot of fun. Um, that could be next week's uh, live stream. If you want me to cast some blanks, I can show you my process on a couple things. Um, if that's of interest, cool. If not, that's cool too. Um, Casting can be more enjoyable than turning. It just all depends on, you know, what your, you know, it depends on what your goals are. All right. Now, this blank is turned. It is polished. It's, it's done. So, I'm going to take the blank off the lathe. Now, remember... A traditional slimline um, is two pieces. This is a one-piece slimline. So I glued in this end of the blank. I glued in this tube to this end of the blank. This tube here is loose. It is not in the. Uh, it's not actually um, glued in. So I'm going to put this blank over where we're going to assemble it. And if you guys give me half a second, close your eyes if you get seasick, because I'm gonna move you guys to our assembly table. This is the part where having multiple cameras would be handy, but we're not quite there yet. One day, one day, one day we'll get fancy. All right. Uh, all right. Let's see. Hopefully we're okay there. Um, okay. All right, so now we have... Now we have our um, now we have our assembly. I'm gonna I'm gonna turn this way, so hopefully this is a little better. Now, let me grab my pen insertion tool. It's got a little bit of glue build up there, but that's that'll be all right. Now. This, this is a slimline kit. This is just a standard slimline kit from that I got from uh, Turner's Warehouse. Um, and I use the pen tubes from here, and then this is the kit. So um, if you want to turn this exact kit, this is what you're going to look for at Turner's. Um, Chad is, is good people. I enjoy uh, ordering from him. Um, and I, this is this is where the pen insertion tool comes in handy. So I glued in this side, um, but now I need to take out that pen tube. The reason we put the pen tube in there is because then that way it it gives it some rigidity when you turn it. And before we go too too far, this is our blank. This is what it looks like up close. Um, I know we're still kind of dark but it's not too bad. All right, now, 
pen insertion tool. We take the tube out of, of, our, of our blank. This is where assembly gets fun. Now, because we glued our tube into this, into, uh, into this end of the blank, this is where our cap and our clip is gonna go. So I'm going to lay out my parts. If there is one part of assembly, if there's a piece of advice for assembly that I can give, it's organize your parts. Having, an, having your parts organized makes things go a lot smoother and it reduces the chance of, um, of misassembly um, quite a bit. Transmission, transmission is important. Okay, so here is our, here is our cap, I guess for lack of a better term. We already established that that's gonna go on this end. Here is our nib. Our nib goes opposite of our cap. And this is what I'm talking about when I mean layout. I'm laying these out in a strategic position so I know where each, where each piece goes. Here's our clip. So that's going to go with our cap or our end cap here. And then this center band, because this is a one piece modified slimline pen, you're actually not going to need this. If you were doing a traditional slimline, uh, traditional two piece slimline all day, um, you, would, you would use this. But because we're doing a modified, we don't need that. OK, now. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to push in the clip, the clip and the end cap. This is a Milescraft pen press. I not so subtly hinted that I wanted one of these for my birthday and um, well, the rest is history. All right, let's move this table saw fence out of the way because it's currently in the way. It's a planning fail on my part. All right. Now I'm going to just get this started because I haven't decided where I want the where I want my clip to go yet. So if I get this started, we're just gonna barely get it. Now you want to make sure you're straight when you press this in. Now I'm looking at this pen and I'm thinking. I don't know that there's a bad spot to put this, but I think I want to put this cap, this clip right here. Um, the clip is really good if you know that you have defects in your pen that aren't going to go anywhere, but are just small things. Um, the clip does a good job of hiding small defects that aren't going to be structural issues. Um, or if you know that it's just a, uh, a carry pen for for yourself and you can live with it that's fine too um, but if you're going to shows and selling pens that's another thing but now our cap is our cap and our uh, clip is pressed in here's where the magic happens uh, Planning is overrated, clearly. Um, if that hasn't been obvious by, uh, I can't use my words, 
by my assembly table here. Um, anyway, here's where the tube, um, here's where the tube comes in handy. Um, I haven't scuffed this up or anything. So in a traditional slimline, I know I keep referring to a traditional slimline, but in a traditional slimline, you scuff up both tubes, you glue them in, you turn it and you assemble it. The tube that you do not glue into your, into your body does not get scuffed. Um, so what you're going to do first is you're going to press gently you're going to, you want to make sure you're lined up. You're going to press the nib into your bare tube. You want to make sure you're lined up because if you're not lined up, you could bend it. You could bend the assembly and it, it might not end well. So that's going to get pressed in nice and snug. And that you press that one all the way in, just like you would a normal slimline. Now you're going to take the transmission and you're going to press it into the bare tube again. Now you can see there's a little crease just above the brass color. I'm going to press it. That's, that's about where they want you to press it in. I'm going to stop just shy of that when I press this in and I'm going to test my mechanism to see, uh, to, to see. So let's go ahead and press that in again. You want to make sure that your, that your assembly is nice and straightforward. You don't want any bends or anything like that. Uh, all right. If you feel a bend, try to, gently correct it. Don't force it because the last thing you want to do is force it. If you force something that doesn't want to go, you could break it. And then to get do all this work and then break it would be a shame. Now, if you can see, my line is right there. So I haven't pressed it in uh, all the way. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my ink and I'm going to put it into the cart into the cartridge. I'm going to seat this and I'm going to test it. And you can see that it's not quite as far out as I as I would like it to be ejecting. So I'm going to retract this. I'm going to take the ink out. And then I'm going to, I'm going to actually go ahead because I know that I was a little bit short. I'm going to press and stop at the line. Again, you want to make sure that you're slow and steady, nice and straight when you're pressing the pen. Don't force the issue. Because if you push this in too far, that's it. Like you're not, you, there is no getting that back out. Um, so now we're going to test it again. So again, we're going to twist the ink in. We can see that we are retracted. Now we're going to
We lost Robert. Hopefully he'll be back in just a second. One moment, please. He was right in the middle of pressing this pen together. Hopefully he'll be right back. Hey, Robert, can you hear me? Looks Hello? like he said, hey, Robert, thank hey. you for coming back. Yeah, we're still, I, uh, we're still live. <laughs> we are still live. So here is, uh, I appreciate Todd hanging out with us. He is, uh, he is the man behind the scenes. Um, he's the one putting up all the links. His information is in the description. Uh, so go check out his YouTube channel. My, uh, my phone for some reason decided to, um, decided to drop the internet connection, but hopefully we can get a decent look here at a pen. Let me, let me grab a piece of paper here real quick. So, Robert, when we lost you, you had just pressed the uh, pin in a little bit further and were showing us the uh, the refill sticking out of the nib. Yes. So if so, you want to walk us through what happened after that. Yeah, so, so what happened was basically, yeah, there we go. So this is what it, this is what it looks like disassembled. And I... I was explaining that here it is, here's the pen retracted, or not retracted, uh, extracted, you know, it's, it's out and uh, it's out as it should, it might be a little far, but it's not, it, it's, it's perfectly functional. So now I can retract that. And the way this goes together is you have this end and it just presses in there by by hand and then that is what gives you your completely functional pen um, so if we get a uh, that might not lighting is so difficult but there you have your your pen you twist you twist here and I can write I can write a message, you know, I can say after I take the, the gunk off the ink cartridge, I can say something like, thanks for watching. And it writes just like that. And I could sign it. I, I almost feel like Jimmy Fallon with thank you, thank you, uh, thank you note music. I could sign it. And there you have it. And that's all it takes to assemble this modified slimline pen. Um, so if, you know, if you guys have, if you guys have questions um, or just want to hang out and have a conversation, I'm willing to, hang out and uh, have a conversation or if we want to call it here um, sounds like there might be some interest in some uh, resin casting next week so maybe we'll maybe we'll do uh, maybe we'll do that so Robert uh, since I broke my silence earlier I, I have a question for you go for it I was uh, I was I was wondering if you could maybe walk us through a couple of other modifications someone might make to a uh, to a slimline pen like that with uh, you know some different variations that you've maybe done in the past. Yeah. So one of the things um, the standard uh, two piece slimline it, it's pretty standard. Um, obviously, the modified one piece slimline is is pretty 
Um, that's a pretty standard modification a lot of people will make. I I based my methods off of Bob over at RJB Wood Turner. Uh, I watched his videos to see how it was done. Um, and then, uh, but some of the other things in terms of slim lines, um, I know there are aftermarket clips and center bands. So if you wanted a different clip here, um, there, you know, you can go out and buy a, you, you can buy it, buy a clip, or if you wanted a, um, a center band, um, you know, that there are different center bands that people can buy. So, you know, to personalize it. So I know like, um, there might be a golf one or a uh, football, or, uh, if somebody's a hunter, they might have something, you know, a there's, you know, it can be, it can be customized to, to the person. So if you're turning a pen for, you know, somebody who, who likes sports, you can get that certain sport and personalize it a little bit further that way. So good stuff. Well, I think, I think if, if that's, uh, if anybody else has anything in the chat, we can talk about it. Otherwise, I think we'll we'll sign off here, and we will see you guys next week. Thanks for hanging out with us, and uh, thanks for sticking through the technical difficulties. <laughs>